In this video, we're going to review options for labeling areas. Let's begin by looking at the area default settings. Under the area layout pull-down menu, we have area defaults, or in the area layout tab, under settings, area defaults. We execute that command and we see a dialog box. On the left are available labeling fields. To add a field to be labeled, you highlight the field and hit add, and that field will move to the right side under the used fields. To remove it, you highlight it and hit remove. As you can see, I have a lot description. I'm going to label in terms of square feet and acres. There are a few general settings in this dialog box to pay attention to. One, I like commas in the labels. That is particularly useful in large parcels and certainly with square feet. I also like the use of M text as opposed to individual pieces of text. You can hide the drawing under the labels, which basically adds a wipeout or M text mask around the label itself. The option to erase previous labels will erase an existing label and replace it with a new one without the need to manually erase that label. There are a few other options. Drawing symbols around lot descriptions is preferable to some users. Those symbols would come from the symbol library. And avoiding label overlaps in areas where there's tight labels, it will seek to move labels around making them more readable. Each individual field then can be modified at the user's discretion. I highlight the lot description and hit edit and another dialog box appears which allows me to control a text style, the size of the label, and that's a scalar which means it will scale times the scale of the drawing. This is set as a 0.12 text size scalar so at a 20 scale drawing it would come out to be 2.4 feet, the layer for the label, and a prefix in this case, I have a lot, so each area will be labeled with that prefix and a, an optional suffix as well. Likewise, for square feet, I can make the text size maybe a little bit smaller in this case and change the suffix to SF for square feet. Acres, text size scalar, suffix, and the precision can be set for both acres and square feet. Under the Area Commands tab, there is an important numerical value to set, and that is the maximum gap to join. And this is when using the option of selecting lines and arcs, you can set a tolerance for lots that don't close perfectly. Once the settings are complete, you can save those settings in an external file, which is, has the extension ARS, which then can be recalled or shared. I hit OK. I am ready to begin labeling areas. Again, under the area layout pull down, I have my options inverse with area by selecting lines and arcs, by picking interior point, and by an already closed polyline. I'm going to start with area by interior point, and I'm going to label the first lot on the left. I just simply pick a spot anywhere towards the middle of the lot. You can see that the lot area is highlighted, so you can visually check to make sure you have the right one. And it prompts for a lot description. I'm going to press 1, knowing that the prefix is already set to lot. And it adds a label, which is graphically placed on my cursor, allowing me to pick the spot to place that label. For the next lot, I have an easement line. Using the same option, area by interior point would result in an area being calculated only to the intersecting easement line. Instead then, I will use the option inverse with area. I'm going to pick the beginning point of the area and snap to each point along the lot. And when I get to the curve, I can hit R for radius and I am presented with the option to enter the radius point by number or by picking it from the screen. I'm going to use my O-snap overrides for center. 
pick the center of that curve, define the curve direction as being to the left, and pick the endpoint. When complete, I hit enter, and a quick report appears, which I can just exit out of. It asks me again the lot description, which is lot number two, and I place the lot area. Another option, of course, is to simply freeze the easement lines, and then I can use area by interior point again. I can restore my easement layers, and if I want a total perimeter area, I will select area by closed polyline. I then have a new dialog box that gives me an option for a single area or multiple areas, which can be totaled. I'm going to leave it on single area, skip the report for this, leave it on label area and auto place label, then select the outer perimeter, which is a closed polyline. And for the lot description, I'm going to write total. And the area label is automatically placed at the centroid of the polyline. Remember, when link labels with line work is enabled in the general settings configuration, any polyline labeled with this method will update dynamically as the polyline is adjusted.